Hey everybody, what's going on? So today in this video, I'm going to be talking about a brand new bait. Um, so you guys know that I have this bait right here. This is the Docks Lure Company Bullfrog. So there for a long time, this was the only uh, true topwater bait that I had. Now you now I've used other baits of mine as topwater baits, and I've caught quite a few fish. I've used the the uh, uh, big the bullgill uh, right here's one actually. It's broken. Uh, but here's one here it's broken this was like one of the first ones I ever made and uh, it's literally uh, the tail is pretty much broken off of it but this is the original topwater bait that I had you basically just hook it weightless and you buzz it across the surface pretty simple it's caught a lot of fish my cousin's caught fish on it my uncle's caught fish on it I've caught fish on it my dad's caught fish on it and the people who have bought them have caught fish on them. And it is a really good bait. Now, if you're wondering what color this is, this color is called root beer. And it's got some silver flake in it. So if you want this bait in this color, that's what it is. This is the original topwater bait. So I wanted to make another one. I wanted to have a different one. A little bit of a different profile. A little bit of a different kick uh, sound and movement in the water. So I got this one right here. This one right here is called the pond hopper. And the reason why it's called the pond hopper is because I think that if you ever take um, this type of bait, this small little bait right here, to a pond, a small pond with a bunch of 10 to 12 inch long bass, I think you would catch fish all day with it. I honestly do. It's got a really good action in the water. Um, it has a lot different action than I've ever seen on a different uh, buzzing frog. Back before I started making them, I used to use other companies' baits. And this, this bait right here has a completely different action than any other bait I've ever used. Um, if you look, it's got the three little claws right there. And what you can do is, I've noticed this, but you can actually take each one off if you want to on each side. And not only does it give it a faster action, but it also gives it a tad bit of a different sound and it actually does pretty cool or it sounds pretty cool um, so it's a lot different than the other one the butt of the bullfrog um, this one here is more shaped like a boat you know it's got the the flat side up here on the top and it's got the big rounded side here and you hook it like that and it'll buzz across the surface like so the tails will kick back and forth um, but this one here is a little bit different if you look at the body design it is a shorter more compact body with really big long uh, really big long tails legs whatever you want to call them and it has one distinct side that you hook it on here's the boat hull kind of a shape and then there's the two little side things that you put your hook in then there's a little slip right there if you look or split on each side where you can put your hook through. You put your hook through this side and it comes out in here and it sits weedless. Now, something I've done with this bait since I've gotten it and started making them, I took one, went out to my pond, was thinking, okay, maybe I will get a few blow ups on it. And I did. I actually had a giant bluegill. I thought it was a small bass until I realized it wasn't. It was a giant hybrid bluegill and he grabbed a hold of one of the tails and was swimming around with it. After I busted off of a lily pad and he grabbed a hold of the tail and started swimming around with it. And then I realized it was a bluegill, so I just kind of pulled it out of his mouth. So then, <clears throat> literally the next cast, I cast it right back on top of those same lily pads, brought it off them lily pads and started buzzing it real slow. And all of a sudden, whew, big, huge explosion. About a 10 inch long bass, really. It wasn't giant, but a big old explosion. And he actually completely missed the bait, which I thought was kind of funny. But it is an awesome bait. I love the action on it. Um, also, what I've done with this is I've tried it a couple different ways. Before I uh, tell y'all about a bait, I will always test them out several different ways. Uh, one of the ways that I tried it out was weightless. That's how I had those blow-ups there. I also tried it on a buzz bait. If any of you guys are buzz bait fishermen, y'all should check this bait out because it is a really good buzz bait trailer. Honestly, it's a lot better than other buzz bait trailers I've used. Uh, something I like about it is with the short, compact body, 
there's a lot of tail kick. And for a buzzbait trailer, it would be perfect. Um, also, the other way I tried it was a little bit of an unconventional way, but I put it on the back of a football jig. And it actually looks really awesome on the back of a football jig. Um, you can use it as a swim jig trailer, or you could just hop it off the bottom, and it looks really good. Um, something else that I haven't personally tried, but I think would be perfect for it, would be flipping. I think flipping would be really good with this. Another thing would be bed fishing, which is another form of flipping. But take this on a little Texas rig, flip it out there in a bed, let it just kind of fall down real slow, and you'd probably be able to catch a lot of fish on it. What I really like about it compared to the other one is if you look, look at the different size in body. It's almost a completely different size. Well, it obviously is a completely different size, but what I mean is it's a almost twice the size difference. Well, you guys can see there, they're both in the same color. I wanted to make them in the same color so you guys can get a reference of what it is. But it's a wider bait with these big tails, but it doesn't have a really, really loud, crazy action. It actually has a very slow, kind of a rolling action on the water. And it doesn't have a super wide, thumping, crazy, almost like a water plopper type uh, kick to it. It just has a very subtle very slow, very easy to fish bait. Um, I've thrown it mainly the way I throw it. Um, if I'm going to throw it weightless, I throw it on a bait caster. Um, but something, or on spinning rod, sorry. But if I'm going to throw it on buzz bait or a jig, I'll throw it on bait caster, obviously. Um, but something I noticed with this, now I don't, I wasn't able to get any footage of it outside. Sorry. I wasn't able to get any footage of it outside because by the time that I went out there and done it, um, it was kind of too dark to do it. But when you use a small enough hook, about a one aught, two aught EWG hook, um, I was actually using a three aught and it was still doing it, but it would slowly sink. Um, but if you would bring it off of a lily pad or over a limb or whatever, even if you just cast it and let it sit, it'll actually float. It'll just sit right on the surface. And it'll just sit there. And then you can go ahead and start reeling it. Um, if I was using a three aught hook and when I would stop it, it would sit there. And then when I would move it again and stop it, it would really slowly sink. I'm talking super slow. Like it almost didn't even look like it was sinking, um, but it actually was. Uh, I'd say if you put it on a one aught or a 2 aught EWG hook and you just let it slow fall, super duper slow, um, it may not even slow fall at all. It might just float. And that's something that I've never uh, seen in a buzzing frog. I've always you know, seen the ones with real bad salt in them that would rust out your hooks these don't have salt. They don't have any um, stuff that will rust out your hooks. I've left baits just like this. I've done an experiment. I didn't you do it on YouTube. Probably should have. But I took and put one of these baits, not this bait obviously because it's brand new, but one of my baits put a EWG hook in it and I also took on the other end of it and put just a normal Eagle Claw bluegill hook. Put it in there and I left it in a Ziploc bag open for a long time. I don't even remember how long. And I went back, took the hook out, no rust at all. I really liked that because I've done that with other companies' baits back before I started making baits, and they would all have rust in them because of the salt and the and whatever they put in it. I don't even know what they put in them. All this is is a salt-free bait that you don't have to worry about your baits or your hooks getting rusted, and it is an easy-to-use bait. So that right there is the new Doxler Company Pond Hopper. Now this, this is available in all colors. Now I did say this a while back, but I wanted to reiterate that again. The chartreuse, I used to make a chartreuse color of baits. Oh, the ceiling fans started making a noise, sorry about that. Um, but the chartreuse color is now um, discontinued. Uh, the coloring is very inconsistent. It doesn't want to uh, make the right color each time. All my other colors are fine though. I don't know why the chartreuse started acting stupid, but the chartreuse is discontinued, um, but every other color I make is fine. The green pumpkin, black, um, the uh, gray, the minnow gray. Um, this color here is called root beer. There's red. There's actually two different types of red. There's kind of a uh, more of a see-through red, and then there's a just completely red, like a, what's something that's red right here? Like a, this color red, like a super bright red. And then there's white and there's also a couple different other colors that I'm having trouble remembering. 
Um, but there's also white flake, there's silver flake, blue flake, and red flake. Um, also, another color is crystal shad. If you guys have never seen that, it's basically clear plastic with a little bit of like silver flake or blue flake or even white flake. I don't make the uh, red flake in the crystal shad. So, I hope you guys like this video. If you do want to purchase these, these come in 10 in a pack for $4. They are an awesome bait. I love them. I haven't uh, caught anything on them. But just, you know, being out there for maybe a half hour and getting two big blow-ups, one from a bluegill, one from a bass, I know that they're going to be really good in some small ponds and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, once I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a huge giveaway. So share this video on any of your social medias or whatever and help me get to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching. Bye.